Okay, in this tutorial, I want to talk to you about 2020 paper two, question six. We're talking about probability here. In the first part of the question, we're told that the make and the fuel type of cars in a car park were analyzed. 30% of the cars were diesel, and 70% of those cars were also Volkswagen. So to work out the probability that you would have a car that was Volkswagen and diesel, you multiply the probability that it's diesel multiplied by Volkswagen. Because you want this event to occur and this event to occur. So you want it to be diesel and you want it to be Volkswagen. So you have to multiply. 0.3 by 0.7 is 0 0.21. So Volkswagen diesel cars accommodate for 21% of all the cars in the lot. Then we're told that 60% of the cars are petrol and 25% of the petrol cars are Volkswagen. So to work out how many cars are Volkswagen and petrol, you multiply. And means you multiply. 0.6 by 0.25 is 0 0.15. So 15% of all of the cars in the, in the car park are Volkswagen and petrol. We're then told that 10% of the cars are hybrid and 9% of those cars are Volkswagen. So to work out the percentage of cars that are hybrid and Volkswagen, it's 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.09. That accommodates for 0.009% of the overall car park. So I want to know, then I'm asked, what's the chances of selecting a Volkswagen car? And of all the cars in the car park, what's the probability that I select a Volkswagen car? Well, that means either it's Volkswagen and diesel, or Volkswagen and petrol, or Volkswagen and hybrid. Or implies that we add. So if you add your three different values together, the probability works out as 0.369. So 36.9% of all of the cars in the car park are Volkswagen cars. Okay, in question six, B part one, we're told that in a certain driving test center, if someone is there to take their test for the first time, the probability that they will pass is one quarter. So immediately you should think, right, the probability someone passes is a quarter, that means the probability they fail is three quarters. We're told that Joe is taking his test for the first time and that there are five other people taking their test for the first time as well. So there's six in total. And we're asked to work out the probability that Joe will pass his test and two of the other five people will also pass their test. We're told that each test is independent of each other, so we're dealing with a Bernoulli trial. So you could go to your maths tables and take down your formula for a Bernoulli trial. I need to carry out a Bernoulli trial to work out the probability that five out of two people will succeed, or two of the five people will succeed. And then I need to multiply that by the chances that Joe will succeed. I want two of the other five people to succeed, and I want Joe to succeed. So Joe is not actually part of the Bernoulli trial, because I know he definitely has to succeed. However, just two of the other five in any order need to succeed. That means for the Bernoulli trial, the number of, of people is five, the number of successes will be two. The probability of success is a quarter, the probability of failure is three quarters. So if I simply sub into my Bernoulli trial to work out the probability that, five, that two of the other five people will succeed, it's simply five choose two, P which is a quarter to the power of two, and then Q which is three quarters to the power of five minus two which is three. Or in other words, I have five people and I need to choose two of them to succeed. The number of successes will be two, the number of failures will be three. So that's the chances two of five will succeed. But then I also want Joe to succeed. So I want this event to occur and I want Joe to succeed. The ch chances that Joe succeeds is one quarter. And in probability implies that you multiply. So I want this event and I multiply it by this event. That'll give me the chances that both of these events occur. If you plug that into your calculator, your final answer works out as 135 over 2048. That is the chances Joe succeeds and two of the other five people also succeed. Okay, B part two is significantly harder. We're told that in another driving test center, the probability someone will pass is a half, which obviously means the probability someone will fail is a half. We're, asked, we're told that on a certain day, N people take the test. We want to work out the probability in terms of N that no more than two people will pass. If no more than two people will pass, there are three possible things that could occur. Two people could pass, or one person could pass, or no one will pass. Those are the three things that can occur. So I've written out three separate Bernoulli trials for these separate scenarios. 
If I want to carry out a Bernoulli trial to work out the probability that two people will pass out of n people, well, the number of trials will be n. As n people turn up to do the test, two of them pass. Now, the probability of success is a half and the probability of failure is a half. So that means the probability of success to the power of two, failure to the power of n minus two. The probability that one person will pass is, well, there's n people take the test and there's one successes. So success occurs to the power of one, failure to the power of n minus one. Then the probability that no one will pass, n choose zero, that means n people take the test, no one passes. It's a half to the power of zero, and then a half to the power of n. So success occurs zero times, failure occurs every time. Now, it's really going to test your, your knowledge of probability and the more obscure parts of it to simplify this one down. But let's have a look at it. First of all, let's not worry about the n choose 2 yet. So I'm just going to leave the n choose 2 exactly as it is. I want you to think of your rules of powers. One of your rules of powers on page 21 in the maths tables tells you that if you've a to the power of p multiplied by a to the power of q, you can simply add the powers together and you get a to the power of p plus q. So if I have a half to the power of 2 by a half to the power of n minus 2, I can simply add them together. The, in this case, what, what is the a in the formula is a half. So the, the base is going to stay the same, but you're going to add the powers together, p plus q. If I add 2 plus n minus 2, the 2's simply cancel, and I'm left with a half to the power of n. And now, if I continue on, n choose 1, I'm just for the moment going to leave that as just n choose 1, but I'm going to use this rule again. A half to the power of 1 by a half to the power of n minus 1, I add the powers together, 1 plus n minus 1, once again the 1's just cancel, and I'm left with a half to the power of n. Now, you should know that n choose 0, there's only one way in which you can choose zero, 0 things. If I have 0 things to choose from, there's only one way in which I could do it. So n choose 0 is simply 1. Any number to the power of 0 is simply 1, and then this is a half to the power of n. And that's the third term simplified fully. Now the real issue is going to lie in the n choose 2 and the n choose 1. But for the moment, before that, let's just have a look at something. You should notice that the first term is a half to the power of n, the second term is a half to the power of n, the third term has a half to the power of n. So I'm going to factorise out the, the half to the power of n. If I factorise it out of the first term, I'm simply left with n choose 2. If I factorise it out of the second term, I'm left with n choose 1. If I factorise it out of the third term, I'm just left with 1. So it's a little bit neater. And I, now I just need to continue to manipulate until it looks like what was given in the question. Now this is the really, really tricky bit, simplifying n choose 2 and n choose 1. You need to go to page 20 in your maths tables. On the very bottom of page 20 in your maths tables, it tells us that if you have n choose or, n choose or is the same as n factorial over or factorial by n minus or factorial. It's a very obscure rule that you've probably rarely used before. But let's have a look at this. Let's look at what would happen to n choose 2 if I use this formula. n choose 2, if I sub into the formula, obviously n is going to stay the same, but or becomes a 2. So the top will simply be n factorial, or factorial will become 2 factorial, and n minus or factorial will become n minus 2 factorial. Now you should be familiar with doing questions where you have an n factorial on the top of the fraction and an n minus 2 factorial on the bottom of the fraction. We want to somehow eliminate, we want to cross out the n minus 2 factorial on the bottom with an n minus 2 factorial on the top. So what I want to do is start to simplify n factorial. If you're not 100% on this, you make sure you go to the website and go to, there's a very brief tutorial on factorials. The only thing we can really do with the likes of n factorial is we can rewrite it as n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by n minus 2 factorial. 10 factorial is the same as 10 by 9 by 8 by 7 factorial. Same principle here. n factorial is the same as n by one number less than it, by one number less than it again. And I could keep going on and get n minus 3 and n minus 4, but I don't want it. Because I have 2 factorial on the bottom, and I also have an n minus 2 factorial on the bottom. I love the look of this, because the n minus 2 factorial on the bottom 
will cancel with the n minus 2 factorial on the top and this is all of a sudden way more straightforward. The top is simply n by n minus 1 which is n squared minus n. The bottom is 2 factorial. 2 factorial is simply 2 multiplied by 1. 2 multiplied by 1 is just 2. So using this rule from page 20 in my maths tables you can simplify n choose 2 down to n squared minus n over 2. And obviously you would leave that work on your page here, but I'm going to wipe it off so that I can make it clear here. So instead of n choose 2, it's n squared minus n divided by 2. Now I need to do the same thing for n choose 1, although it's going to be significantly easier for n choose 1. If I use that rule, the same rule as I'm just after using for n choose 1, it's going to become n factorial over 1 factorial by n minus 1 factorial. If there's an n minus 1 factorial on the bottom, I want an n minus 1 factorial on the top. I can rewrite n factorial as n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. I go down just one term. And on the bottom, 1 factorial is simply 1, and I already have an n factorial, n minus 1 factorial on the bottom. So they cancel out, and I'm just left with n. So n over 1, so n choose 1 simply simplifies down to n. So that's how we simplify that one, which again, really obscure stuff. But if you know your stuff, it's easy enough. So that just becomes an n, and this is a 1. We're very close now to simplifying this. I have a half to the power of n, and then I have this fraction. So what I might do is wipe this off, and I'm going to take it from the top. From here, it's relatively straight, straightforward to get to our answer. Okay, so I left you, I had a half to the power of n, and inside the brackets we had n squared minus n over 2 plus n plus 1. What I decided to do inside the brackets was get a common denominator. So it's n squared minus n over 2 and n plus 1 over 1. So the common denominator is obviously 2, and if I divide 2 into here, I just get 1, so the n squared minus n stays the same. 1 into 2 goes twice, so you multiply the top of the fraction by 2, and you get 2n plus 2. And then all I did was I added my like terms in the middle, 2n minus 1n gives me 1n. So now I'm at n squared plus n plus 2 over 2 times a half to the power of n. At this stage, you should start to look at the way that I want to leave my answer. A half to the power of n, that is the same as 1 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n. You'd multiply 1 by itself n times and you'd multiply 2 by itself n times. What you should recognize is that 1 by 1 by 1, no matter how many times you multiply 1 by itself, it's just 1. So in fact, I can write 1, a half to the power of n as 1 over 2 to the power of n. And now think about the top here, it's just n squared plus n plus 2, all divided by 2. I want you to view this as 2 to the power of 1. When you're multiplying fractions by each other, you multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. If I, so I want to multiply these fractions by each other. If I multiply 1 by the top of this fraction, I'm simply left with n squared plus n plus 2. If I multiply 2 to the power of n by 2 to the power of 1, I'm going to use that rule that I used a moment ago. a to the power of p by a to the power of q. You simply add the powers together and you get a to the power of p plus q. So 2 to the power of n by 2 to the power of 1, you simply add the powers together and you get 2 to the power of n plus 1. And happy days, this one looks exactly like what I was trying to get to. I can now conclude that a, the coefficient of n squared is 1. b, the coefficient of n is 1. c, the constant at the end is 2. So there are your three values for question 6, b part 2.